Hello! Today I'll be showing you how to make this cute ocean shaker card using shrink plastic starfish. I'll be stamping the starfish from So Jelly with some stays on ink. Stays on ink is really permanent, so I'm always careful when I'm using it. I'm going to be stamping it on some shrink plastic, and you can do it freehand. But it might move a little bit because it's quite slippery. So what I like to do is place the shrink plastic in one of my stamping bodies. And that way I have much more control of where the stamp is going. And if it doesn't have enough ink on the first, first try, you can just easily do it again. Once you've stamped enough images, you can start coloring. Now, of course, you should be waiting until the ink is dry, but I'm a bit impatient. So what I like to do is just flip over the plastic and color on the other side. That way you don't have to worry about your markers smudging the ink or getting a lot of ink stain on them. Um, once they're colored, you can just cut them and then it's time to shrink them. I like to place my image in something heat resistant and I hold it in place with some tweezers and I use the tweezers with a bit of rubber on the handle because you're blowing a lot of hot air and then your tweezers can get quite hot. Um, once the image is fully shrunk I take it out and quickly place it between some baking paper and then I press it down for 15 seconds with something heavy. In my case that's a wooden cutting board and after the 15 seconds you can grab your image and you can see that it's totally flat and really shrunk. As you can see while cutting out this starfish I accidentally cut off a little bit too much. I'm going to fix this mistake by using a Copic fine liner. That way nobody will ever know that I cut off a little bit too much. And these two are done. For my card I'm going to be using nine of them. As you can see I've laid out all of the pieces I'm going to use to make this card. First of all I'm using the largest rectangle from the large rectangle stackables. I used sugar plum cardstock for this. On top of that I used the outside in stitched rectangles and I made a white piece of cardstock because it's going to be ink blended and a little bit uh, for the sand bank. I used a jar from How You Been because that's where I'm going to put my shaker elements in. I used mermaid for you for the mermaid, the little shell, the coral and the sea plants and of course the little fish. And from seahorsing around I also used the little plant. And I colored them with my Lawn Fawn ink cubes. I used five colors in total. And now a little special thing I do. I use the glossy accents and I place them or I place drops of them on an empty sticker sheet and I let them dry completely. And after they dry, you've got these cute embellishments you can use as bubbles in the ocean. Now, of course, you're going to need a bit of acetate if you're going to make a shaker card. So I made a piece of that and you'll be needing two. And finally, I've got nine of these cute little starfish. Now, 
I'm using my Copic markers to color all of my images. I'm showing you the cap so you can see which numbers I used for this card. With my white gel pen, I place some accents on all of the images.
I'm using tape runner to attach the acetate to my uh, jar. The reason for that is because I don't like working with liquid glue on plastic because it always smudges and I somehow always make a mess of it. With tape runner I can control where it goes and where it stays. Now it's time to decide how high my sandbank is going to be. I'm placing it uh, with the jar so I can just see how it looks best and then I'm gonna run it through my die cut machine. I used the stitched hillside borders for this. I'm going to do some ink blending with antique linen and brushed corduroy. I'm starting with the lightest color and then I'm going around the edges with the darkest color. Once I applied my darkest color, I'm going back in with the lightest color to blend the two together. And to make my panel look more like sand, I'm using vintage photo to make some splatter on it. I bought this glass media mat today and I'm so happy I did. It is easy to use and super easy to clean and it saves so much time. I love it. I should have bought it months ago. Now that my sand is done, I'm going to be making the ocean itself. I'm using cracked pistachio, peacock feathers and salty ocean. I'm going to start with cracked pistachio and then I'll go around it with peacock feathers and top it off with the darkest color salty ocean. I'm going back and forth to make sure that these three colors blend perfectly together. I want to give some more interest to my ocean, so I'm using my water bottle with the L'Enfant Liquid Stardust mixed into it. It gives a nice sparkle and I like what it does to my Distress Oxide background. I'm using a paper towel to pick up all of the water drops and when I remove it I see that I want some more splatter, so I'm just gonna continue until it's enough. And now onto the part that I always forget until the end and it's too late. And that is the sentiment. I'm using uh, the sentiment from Seahorsing Around and I'm going to be stamping it with some Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. Inside my shaker, I'm not only going to place my starfish, but also some tiny beads, a little larger beads, and my stars from the uh, Nouveau Peacock Feathers mix. I put the beads in there to make sure it has sort of like a bubble effect. And it also helps the starfish move around inside the shaker element. For the shaker, I'm going to go around with foam tape that is 2 mm thick and I'm placing 1.5 mm thick foam tape on top of that because I want my stars to have enough space to shake around.
I'm going around the edges of my foam tape with my anti-static powder tool. We stamped and colored on different sides of the shrink plastic. When you put the shaker element inside, you want to make sure that the side where you have your stays on ink is facing up. Or in this case facing down because we have the shaker element upside down. After filling it I realized I needed to cut one more of those acetate jars because that's what I want to use to close off this shaker element. I'm using the same amount of foam tape on my sandbank as I did on my shaker. As you can see I glued the sandbank onto my jar because that way I know how high my foam tape can go. I'm using the smallest score tape to make sure that my shaker is going to attach to my card panel. I'm using the same amount of foam tape on my mermaid and one of the seahorses and on the purple seahorse I'm using just uh, one layer of foam tape just to give it some dimension.
To attach those bubbles I made using glossy accents, I'll only need a little bit of glue. I'm using a sticky tool to help me uh, hold the bubbles and then with my other hand I can place some glue underneath. A card is not complete without some glitter. I'm using my Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Glitter Gloss Pen to add some glitter to the fish and the uh, seashells and to the tail of my mermaid. And of course also to the seahorses. Now all there's left to do is attach this panel to my sugar plum panel. and make a card base to finish my card. And that finishes my card. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it, give it a thumbs up if you did. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel to never miss a video. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye!